was great. Oh my God. And pardon. But you had to go to Calvary. Pardon. Was multiplied. Jesus of mercy. Come on, send us to Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. So my burden, so, oh, I'm going to carry that more. I can share that off and found liberty, but it was at Calvary. Oh, my God, I thank you for Calvary. Hallelujah. We have our last speaker, and this will be the seventh word from the cross by Sister Jane. Father, into your hands. Yes. Come, Sister Jane. Put it in his hands, Janie. Oh, my God. I need him to put it in the hand. That's the good morning. 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 Mama, hey, friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bless God for having a prayer party in your corner. I tell you that. She the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord. Father, yes. into thy hands I commit my spirit yes, yes, Lord. the last words of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. people tend to pay close attention to the last words of the departed mm -hmm. especially if they are rich famous anointed so on they anticipate think something noteworthy coming from them the last words of the dying to their loved ones are most often advice about relationships, according to a new poll in an article by Ian Johnston of the Daily Telegraph. The survey of 2,190 people who had lost a relative found 83% had been given an advice of some kind. Relationships are the most common subject of conversations, followed by careers, family, education. Surprisingly, not even spiritual. Not even spiritual. Oh you cross in Jordan and you ain't gonna talk about it. Yeah. Do you turn it to? Yeah. No, I'm there. Let me meet that thief. <laughs> the one on the right. On the one on the right. We are gathered here metaphorically at the side of our Savior as he transitions from earth to glory. Yes. And with his final words, he too instructs and advises us by his example. The opening word, Father, mm -hmm. indicates that we need to ensure that our relationship is right. Yes. And that we are in harmony with our Father, our Heavenly Father. In order to become intimate, we are encouraged to draw nigh to him, and he will draw nigh to us. Intimacy with the Father will break down barriers and walls that life over time have caused us to build up. Yes. We all know that situations happen in life, and sometimes because of hurt, yeah. sometimes because of trauma, mm -hmm. Sometimes because of deception, we build some some walls. We do walls of Jerusalem yes. around ourselves. Yes, yes, yes. And only in the presence of God can only those walls come fall. Down. Yes, down. Down. Jesus, right with that. It will open our hearts to receive His love and peace, and cause us to increase our trust. Yes in him and in humanity. Yes. In the physical, you know when you trust and love someone, you give them your heart. Mm -hmm. That because you've spent time with them, you've learned them, you've become intimate with them. Here Jesus commits his spirit, his heart to the Father for safekeeping. What he gave was his most prized possession. And the only person he could trust it with was his father. What is your prized possession? And who are you trusting your most prized possession with? Could it be 
your prized possession, your car, your bank account, your home, none of those things are noteworthy. That's right. Because at the end of the day, what would it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose the one soul he has? Intimacy, what will intimacy do? It will teach you things about a person only few know. It will build your confidence in that person and in their ability. It will give you comfort and peace about your decision making with the person. John 10 and 30 says, this is Jesus speaking now. I and the Father are one. Yes, yes, right, one. Yes, yes. For you to get to a place where you say you and someone are one, one close. you have had to have spent yes, time with them. Yes, not that's just close. time, that's close. but intimate time. Yes. Yes. And John 14, 11 says, Believe me, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Yes. Jesus didn't just commit his spirit to the Father, but he put it in the Father's hand. Into thy hands I commend or commit my spirit. Now we're just talking about some ordinary person Jesus is committing his spirit to. We're talking about almighty, all powerful, all knowing, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipotent God. So why did Jesus have to say he put me in his hand. Well, my thoughts. He said that he was putting it in his hands for our sakes. He was on the cross, about to cross over, but his mind was still, still on, on us. That's right, still on us. There's a song that Bo Williams sang um, some years ago. He wouldn't let it be. He went to hell for me to set me free. My God. He said, you could have come down from that cross and saved yourself, but you decided to stay right there to save someone else. And that's where Jesus found himself crossing over in from earth to glory. And he's deciding now to give us one last instruction to encourage us on his way out. His instructions to us was, well, let's backtrack a bit. Let's ask the question, why did he put it in his hand? Like we say, he is almighty God and he know all things. I conclude that it was for our sakes that he did it. While he was on the cross, he was considering us in our lowly state, he was leaving behind the disciples to have to wrestle and go yeah. through what he just came through. Mm -hmm. So when we are faced with heavy burdens, like Jesus was, on the very cross that he hung, the next one on the side of him, never mind he had already been whipped, mm -hmm. body mutilated, he had already been broken as far as um, having to wrestle and take the weight of the world, the sin of the world on his back, so that we can have life. He reached to a point where he is, he is now about to say his last words, and I'm sure his heart was pleasing towards God, but still on us thinking, what can I say to my saints, or my children, my disciples, my family who he was leaving behind. He said, when we are faced with burdens like him, we can have confidence to put it in God's hand. When life throws us curveballs and knocks us off our feet, we can get up and Put it in God's hands. That's right, we can. When we get a result that is not in favor, in our favor, we can rebuke it and put it in God's hands. That's right. So what was the source of Jesus' confidence? What was his confidence built on? Could it have been 
Psalms 95. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. Or the Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Yes, it did. You opened your hands and satisfied the desire of every living thing. Or could it have been Isaiah? Yet you, yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the works of your hand. What a mighty hand and outstretched arm. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love enjoys forever. Isaiah, behold, I have engraved you in the palm of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. Exodus says, Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. Yes, yes. Because of Jesus' intimacy with the Father, because of him spending time in his word, he knew the word from 12 years old. He was about his father's business, That's teaching right. in the synagogue. So he knew the word. Yes. Because of him constantly having God's relationship with himself on his mind, wanting to do the Father's will, yes. be about the Father's yes. business, he had learned a whole lot about his Father. Sorry. He had learned a whole lot about his Father. Jesus knew what kind of hands he was entrusting and committing his spirit in. His last words were his instructions to the saints. The Father's hands are mighty, are powerful, are warm, loving, gracious. They can be weapons, shield, covering, a fortress, comforting, but above all, he has engraved us in the palm of his hand and none can pluck us out. So while, yes, he was committing his spirit to the Father, but he wanted to leave an instruction to the, to the saints, to the saints, that we must, we must put it in God's hand. Whatever it betides, whatever causes Destroy in your life. Whatever causes confusion. Whatever causes strife. Whatever causes any kind of discomfort. Yes, yes, yes. Discomfort in your mind, put it in his hand. Discomfort in your body, put it in his hand. Discomfort in your heart, put it in his hand. You got your workplace, discomfort there, put it in his hands. In your homes, in your relationships, put it in his oh, hands. Yes, yes, Jesus, a uh, great example, has left us with that instruction. Right. Oh. Whatever be tied, put it, it in God's hands. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. 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 Whatever. Put it in his hand. In his hand. No failure. And it's beautiful for every situation. Put it in his hand. Put it in God's hand. Because if Jesus had not said to put his spirit into the Father's hand, why don't we do the same? Whatever she said, be tight. Whatever you're going through, give it over to the master. And the thing about it, he's standing with open hands, waiting for you to place it there. He's standing with open hands, waiting for you to come and say, here. Take my hand. And so we thank you all who spoke. I mean, <laughs> going
God has used your mighty little. See all about your father's business in here this morning. You all put your situation in God's hand. I gave it to you all, you all give it to God. God bless us all. Because, I, I mean, without you all, we wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't know what to say. But because of your faithfulness, God has opened his hand now to give back to you. All those who spoke, God is opening his hand now to give back to you. God bless you. Now, let's sing. It is finished.